Uh, so in my other video, I did a couple of flat seats, which are a little different than the cafe seats. So I'm gonna show you how we make the cafe seats here. Um, all our seats are made in-house. We make the pan, we do the foam, we do the cover, we do the whole thing in-house, unlike some of the other guys. So here we go. Okay, so the first step is to cut all the plastic to the right size so we can get it into the vacuum forming machine. So all my marks are pre-marked so I know where to cut. Five different cuts to get five different panels from this one sheet, so. We'll just cut the first one for now, for the sake of the video. So there's one. Let's make it into a seat. All right, so once we have the sheet cut, we're gonna clean it off, make sure there's nothing on it, load it into the machine. And I've already put the mold on. This one we're doing a 23 inch uh, cafe seat. All right, so the heater's on. Uh, it's gonna take five, 10 minutes to warm that plastic up uh, to forming temperature. And in the meantime, we're gonna suck all the air out of our vacuum tank and soon. Essentially, it's a giant toaster that's heating up this huge black sheet of ABS. Uh, it's 3 16 thick, so it takes a long time to warm this up, enough to form it down over this mold. So let's give it a couple of minutes. And magic. Okay, my plastic is almost ready. When it's ready, it's extremely uh, pliable. You just gotta make sure we don't have any hard spots in the corners or we're gonna leak. And we need this thing to have a tight seal to suck all the air out of that big tank. So, should be ready a couple of seconds here. And we'll give it a shot. It happens pretty quick, so keep an eye on the, on the mold there. All right, I say it's pretty close. Let's give it a shot. And we gotta cool it down quick. Shut the oven off, and here we go. Seal it, dump it. All right. Something like that. So that's just one step. Now this thing still needs to be cut, sanded. Hardware needs to be installed. Foam needs to be made. Cover needs to be made. And then someone has to put the whole thing together. All right, so that's the inside. So now it needs to be cut completely around. Start sanding it and prepping it for the final product. So all of our seats are still cut by hand on a, on a bandsaw. We don't have the fancy you know, CNC cutters. Um, each seat's a bit different. Uh, when I mold it, there's actually a line that I put in the mold, so it gives me a guide to follow. Here we go. Just cut off all the rough stuff first. Okay, basic shape is that. It does have an angle that goes up, so you can't just cut it straight on a, on a mill or something. So we do have to cut it up on an angle in the back. Uh, and then the rest is sanding and prepping. I use a uh, nice flat belt sander so I can get the seat flat on it for the parts I need to be flat. And the back is pretty close already, so it just needs to be finalized. All right, 
So I just sand it up to the line that I had on the inside of the mold as well. So each seat should be pretty close. I mean, we're talking a hair difference if I sand it a bit too much, but I try to get them all exactly the same. Anyway, so we deburr all the edges, make sure no, nothing's sharp, you know, and we'll hand sand the corners just to make sure nothing pokes through the cover. Anyway, so there you go, general idea. All right, so the shape is there. You can see how much it curves up at the back here, which is pretty cool. So we do custom requests for people as well. Like some people want shorter seats, which you saw me make it. Literally, I can move this block anywhere, which is the tank release block. Uh, if you need a tiny shorty seat, we can do that. Cause literally I'll just cut it there. Um, you know, so we can sand this up a bit higher if you want, uh, whatever. So again, that's why it's customizable and made by hand. So I just got to deburr all these edges. We don't want a sharp edge poking through our cover. And some people ask me why we don't make these out of fiberglass. And I guess my answer is ABS is, is very flexible. You can't bend fiberglass. It will crack. I've seen some brand new fiberglass seats that, you know, a month later, they're all cracked and garbage, you know? So uh, I've seen these on bikes for over four or five years and got a couple back for recovers and they're still perfect. So we might one day do a select few seats in fiberglass um, just because it might be a little easier time-wise. Uh, we have so many different seat models, not all of them need to be flexible, you know? Especially our big seats, like the Triumph seats, they could very well be fiberglass. It's such a big seat. Some of these small ones, I don't know if it's worth it. But... feels good. All right, so next up is mounting hardware. And these seats have six. There's actually little marks here where we put the mounts so we know it goes in the same spot every time. So I need to drill these out, drill out all our hardware, and we rivet them on this side. So it's not going anywhere, and when it's done, it's a nice flush mount. So here we go. So each seat requires six uh, hardware mount points so I made a little jig here usually I'll have these pre-drilled but when I'm busy I forget to do it and I have to do each one for each seat so each one needs to be drilled for a rivet and then we'll match these holes to the seat pan uh, the little jig helps make sure all the holes are in the same spot at least anyway so six of these per seat uh, most seats anyway there's a couple of seats that only take four and uh, some seats use completely different mounts, but most of the universal seats are, are very similar. So. Imagine doing this a million times a day, right? Jeez. There you go. Now we drill the pan, match these, and rivet them in. Like I said, each seat is marked where to drill it. So we'll do pilot holes on these six first. Yeah. All right, so two, four, six. And we grab our rivet gun. And we use stainless rivets or steel rivets, not aluminum, because uh, we need these to stay in the seat. All right, so each one goes on, and it's a very nice flat rivet so it doesn't bulge out on the bottom. Anyway, so when it's done, the mount hole is actually flush, and we actually finish the bottom of the seats generally too with like a nice uh, black carpet or trunk liner, basically. So it covers everything, and we just see the one little hole. So. 
Okay. The reason we put six, it's not because you need six, but this seat could go on, I don't know, a handful of different bikes, right? So maybe you need the, this one. Maybe that guy needs that one. And maybe the Honda guy needs that one. But uh, we're just giving you multiple options here. All right, so six, done. Beautiful, flush. Now the foam is gonna be on top of this. You're not gonna feel it. It's not going anywhere, perfect. So to make the foam for the cafe seats, we use a two-part liquid uh, polyurethane foam that you mix together and it expands into mold. So I made molds, obviously, of each seat. Uh, most of the cafe seats anyway. I think there's one that I don't use this for, but um, so basically I gotta prep the mold, uh, put some mold release here, and we're gonna, doesn't look fancy, but trust me, it works. This is a foam shape on the inside. So we pour the liquid foam in here, and when we're done, we'll peel out the foam. And it's a nice two-part, it's almost a memory foam that we have made for us. So it's a really nice product. Uh, a lot of companies will just use cheap crap, but trust me, it feels awesome. Um, I'm gonna put a little wax that's left on here. We don't need to every time, but uh, once every few. And then we'll spray a, a mold release as well. Let me see if there's enough on here to... It doesn't stick to this anyway, but it'll stick to the fiberglass. I mean, I did this in, a while ago and I never did a gel coat on there. If I had, my life would have been a lot easier, but... Um, so let that dry a little bit. I do have a mold release that I spray and it'll dry in five minutes. We'll give that a few minutes to dry. Okay, once the mold release is dry, we can go ahead and attach this. Now it needs to be clamped down pretty tight or it's gonna just pop right off. So I'm using Clico's because that's what I have. You can use big clamps if you want, it really doesn't matter, as long as it stays together. So I use a number of these all the way around. If you don't know what these are, Google it. They're basically rivets, removable rivets. They're for sheet metal work, but they work fine for this as well. All right. Put in a whole bunch of these. It'll still pop out around here. It's really powerful stuff. So once they're all in, looks kind of like something from Hellraiser. And then on the bottom, trap door. So we can actually pour the foam in. I'll leave one out so I can pour the foam, close it, pop the last one in when I'm ready. Now this is really cool. So what I ended up doing was creating this little two-part liquid foam dispensing machine. If you've ever tried using this stuff, you get a very limited time to mix it. So one tank is part A, one tank is part B, and I can control the temperature because it needs to be at a certain temperature. So when, it, when it's cold in the winter, in here we can warm up these heating blankets, keep the foam at the right temperature, so we get a good mix every time. Part A. I broke my end here, so I got a garden hose in, but it doesn't really matter. Part A goes in. Part A is really thick. And there we go. So you're okay until you mix part B. You only get about 20 seconds to do this. So if you don't mix it with a drill, the chances of getting a good mix are pretty slim. So, got a very limited amount of time here. So here we go, part B going in now. Perfect. So mix it up really fast, get it in the hole. Just gotta make sure you get all of this mixed up properly or you're gonna end up with a lump or a bunch of huge bubbles or just a whole big pile of garbage. 
pour this in here. Now don't ask me what kind of foam this is because I'm not going to tell you. And that's it. We're going to let this sit for a second and it'll start foaming up, bulging out, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. All right, so the foam has done its thing and foamed up. Even a little bit that was left in the container has foamed up at least an inch or so there. So we're going to pop the Clicos off. Open our little trap door and make sure it's full, which it is. Let's just pop it in. Now we used to do a lot of these by hand, but this way we have consistent foam, always the same shape, always the same density. So pop the mold. Beautiful. And pull the foam out. If you forget to put mold release, you're in trouble, but nah, that's only because like, I didn't gel coat the mold, but whatever. So then you got a nice, perfectly shaped foam. We just trim the excess off, a little tiny bit that squeezes out, and then you got a great memory foam seat. Now remember our cover that we make also has a half inch of quilting foam to do the diamonds or the pleats so you get a super comfy foam and then this is going to fit right in the seat right exactly the way it's supposed to it fits over the bump in the front everything's perfect it gets glued down and then we make our cover start upholstering this awesome seat so now we got to start drawing out the pattern on our material uh, for this uh, 23 inch cafe seat. Uh, we don't use cheap vinyl, we use name brand high quality marine vinyl. Um, you'll see some of these other people's seats where it looks like it's falling apart like your old sofa. Um, definitely not the right kind of vinyl to use so uh, keep in mind you do get what you pay for. So Paul's here today. He's gonna finish sewing up that uh, cafe seat cover. I gotta work on this bike. And I gotta get some more seats made so we can get it prepped. Uh, 69 year old uh, video for this is actually coming up right after this video, I believe. bit of glue to hold the foam on. Here our worker gently places the foam into the corresponding seat pan. Things have to be straight. almost finished product. We still got to finish the bottom of the seat, but most companies would leave it 
just like that. Nice. So the cafe seats usually, um, once they're finished on the top, uh, we actually finish the bottom as well. So the whole thing will have a nice liner. Um, but again, a lot of companies will just ship it to you like this. And I think, you know, let's go the extra step and make it look like we actually spent our time finishing this properly. So uh, next up is the bottom. Okay, here is the finished product and uh, flat black with yellow stitch, fully upholstered. Uh, we do offer a paintable version which has a strap here and it leaves the exposed cowl so you can sand it and paint it. Um, you can see those on our website, toughside.com obviously. Um, so again, the bottom is finished as well as the top. Super comfy. All right, there you have it, 23 inch cafe seat, made from scratch, made to order, and I'm gonna box this up and ship it out. So order yours at toughside.com. Check out the link.